Dear friends, grace to you and peace from God, our loving Creator, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. There seems to be three questions and two exhortations or responses to those questions that are really at the heart of our gospel for today. We begin our gospel text with John talking to his disciples in the crowds and testifying about this Jesus whom they've seen and, and all these names and how John saw the Holy Spirit descending like a dove and alighting on Jesus as he was baptized. We hear that Jesus goes on and he tells two of his disciples and he points Jesus out as he's walking by and he says, Behold, the Lamb of God. Well, what happens? The two disciples, they start to follow Jesus. Jesus stops. He sees them following. And here's our first question for tonight. There are today that seems to be uh, an important question to ask, to be asked in our gospel text. Jesus sees those disciples following and he stops. He looks at them and he says, What are you looking for? What are you looking for? You know, I was kind of, in a way, I wonder if Jesus maybe thought to himself, you know, like to ask them the question, what are you looking at? But he asks them, what are you looking for? Now, maybe they were just looking for something miraculous to happen. I mean, Lamb of God's quite a title, isn't it? But maybe, maybe those disciples were looking for something something that was missing in their lives, something that they knew was important, that they had to be part of, something that was not there for them then. I mean, let's, let's think about all those titles given to Jesus in just that short little first part of our gospel text, right? Jesus is called Rabbi, Lamb of God, Son of God, Messiah. Maybe those disciples were looking for another teacher, right? A, a rabbi, somebody that they could follow and learn from and learn the hidden truths about God and to learn uh, ways in which they could be faithful to God in a deeper, more profound way. Maybe they were looking for a teacher to follow that would give them a sense of direction and purpose in their lives that was before that missing. Maybe they were intrigued by the title Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. I mean, for me, what does that even mean, right? Maybe they were curious about what does this title imply. Son of God. Now, there we go. John, their teacher, pointing out this guy walking by has just been baptized. He says, here's the Son of God. And Messiah, the disciples, after encountering Jesus, they, they call him Messiah, anointed. Were they looking for something in their lives? Were they looking for a Messiah that would come and usher in the return of the glory days of Israel and getting rid of those Roman soldiers and the Roman Empire that was um, overrunning them and taking them over? They were looking for something. How does the, and then here comes our first reply. The disciples of John, Jesus asks, what are you looking for? And they reply, Rabbi, where are you staying? Very interesting that in, in Greek, the word for staying isn't just, doesn't just apply to a sense of space. Like, hey, uh, Rabbi, where's your house? You know, uh, or where are you staying? Are you staying at? this in here today where what that word means is a sense more like this when they ask rabbi where you're staying they're asking him what are you about where are you dwelling why are you here what is it about you what's going on and that's what they're asking there not just physical sense of space but they're asking in reply to Jesus' question, what are you looking for? The reply is one of longing. Rabbi, what are you doing? What are you here for? Of 
questions that we might ask. What are we looking for? Jesus, what are you about? Where are you? Another interesting question that pops up in our gospel text or, um, is one that's lifted up by Nathaniel. Philip, we hear, later goes to Nathaniel and he says, We found him, the Son of God. And <laughs> what does Nathaniel do? He asks Philip, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? In the Gospel of John, what's really interesting is that John will use negative pejorative language to actually speak to a truth. So, when Nathaniel asks, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Well, the answer is, of course, yes. Jesus, hometown kid, Jesus, son of God, the Messiah, coming out of Nazareth. Now back to the replies to the questions posed by the disciples. When they ask, Rabbi, where are you staying? Jesus replies with this simple invitation. Come and see. Come and see. Now when Jesus replies with that invitation, he's not just talking about the physical act of seeing, of sight. What Jesus is inviting them into is a life where they can come and experience and live into Jesus' reality. Come and really understand firsthand what Jesus is about. You know, and even if you think about it in our own language, we talk that way, don't we? Like, say like you're pondering over a question or you're, you're trying to solve a, a problem and all of a sudden, you know, the light bulb goes off. And what do you say? You go, oh... I see, right? It's not just a physical sight. It's more an understanding that becomes apparent. That's what Jesus is inviting those disciples into. A life of coming, being present with Jesus, and really truly knowing and feeling and understanding what he's about. There's another invitation, too, that's issued by Jesus, or an imperative or a command, right? So we, we understand that as Jesus is going about and starting to invite people into his life, his disciples, he goes to Philip and he ushers this simple command. Follow me. Be my disciple. Come along on this journey. Maybe that's that imperative to follow me has got me thinking about one of my favorite groups, one of my favorite bands of all time, U2. <laughs> and um, I'm really blessed that my son Aaron got me Bono, who's the lead singer for U2, his memoir called 40 Songs, One Story, Surrender. And maybe it's because I think about the song that was on the Joshua Tree album called I Still Haven't Found What I'm Looking For. You know, what are you looking for? That question made me think about that song. Now, a few words about Bono. Bono describes himself as a follower of Jesus who hasn't caught up to him yet. Isn't that awesome? I love that. And I'd like to just share some words, um, some writing from this book that Bono wrote about his search to find Jesus to be a follower of Jesus, to be a disciple. He writes this. We search through the noise for a signal, and we learn to ask better questions of ourselves and each other. I call the signal God and search my life for clues that betray the location of the eternal presence. For starter, we look to see who is standing beside us or down the road, the ones whose roof we share, or the ones around the corner who have no roof. The mystics tell us God is present in the present, what Dr. Martin Luther King described as the first fierce urgency of now. God is present in the love between us, in a crowd, in a band, in a marriage, in the way we meet the world, 
God is present in love expressed as action. So where is God? Well, while I hope God is with those of us who live such comfortable lives, I know God is with the poorest and most vulnerable. In the slums and cardboard boxes where the poor have to play house. In the doorways as we step over the divine on our way to work. In the silence of a mother who has unknowingly infected her child with a virus that will end both their lives. God is in the cries heard under the rubble of war. In the bare hands digging for air. God is with the terrorized. At sea with the desperate, clinging unto drowning dreams. God is with the refugee. I hear his only son was one. God is with the poor and vulnerable. God is with us if we are with them. Dear friends, our call as followers of Jesus is to come and see. Our call to follow Jesus might take us to those spots and people that Bono names. Or perhaps our call to follow Jesus is more like Philip. Think about Philip's reaction to Nathaniel. You know, Nathaniel, he has this comment, and he's kind of taking a dig at Nazareth, isn't he? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Well, you notice what Philip does. He doesn't just start to castigate Nathaniel for that response. He does something so simple. He just says simply, come and see. Hey, come check out Jesus for yourself. And then you can make that determination if anything good comes out of Nazareth. Dear friends, we might have to go to places we don't want to go in our following of Jesus. But there are so many ways that we can be the ones that invite people to just come and experience Jesus on their own. My friends, we are in a world that is searching for something. People are looking around and thinking to themselves, my God, there's got to be a better solution to what's going on. And you know what? They're looking to us. They're looking to us who profess to be followers of Jesus. They're looking at us and wondering, okay, people of God, what do you have to offer us? What can you tell us about this Jesus out of Nazareth, the Son of God, the Lamb of God, the Messiah? Maybe a good place to start is when we get those questions, is to simply make that invitation. Come and see.